basically the, the most influential place in the world, like in terms of the type of people who live there, the languages that are spoken, just the amount of culture in Queens is ridiculous. Like I go all over the world now and I meet people and they always say to me, oh, how do you know about this? Or how'd you learn that? And I'm like, I grew up in Queens. Like, you know, how couldn't I? Like, you look at my elementary school pictures, it's like the United Nations. Like, you know, got Albanians, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, blacks, whites, everybody. We were all cool. We all came up together. So Queens is dope for that. Musically, like, come on, like, I'm not being biased, but hands down, the best rappers in the game came from Queens, from every era you want to talk about, from Run DMC to 50 Cent, everything in between. You know what I mean? Nas, Beat Nuts, Royal Flush, CNN. Tragedy, Cool G Rap, like, all that came from Queens, you know, and I left people out. There's just Tribe Core Quest, like, it's just so many things that came out of Queens, a lot of people don't even realize that. The first hip hop record that I got was The Great Adventures of Slick Rick. I was in elementary school. My man Jeff Science lived around the corner from me. He had an older brother named Nakai. I used to borrow Nakai's tapes, and Nakai lent me the great adventures of Slick Rick. And I remember getting in trouble in like first grade or second grade, like reciting the lyrics to Indian Girl. You know, I didn't know what crabs and spears and Indian drums was about, but you know, I was saying that and that's just how it went down. I mean, I like where hip hop is today. At, at the end of the day, things evolve, things change, things grow, and there's different genres of hip hop. I don't like the fact that they just put hip hop or rap under one umbrella. Like when you go when you go to a record store and you go to like the rock section, it's like broken down. It's like alternative, metal, hardcore, etc. But they they just put us all like yeah, hip hop. Like nah, man, it's old school, new school, trap, east, west. Like it's all everything has its own twist to it. So don't just throw us in one box. I guess the politics in the music business is wax, whack. But at the end of the day. Politics in any business is whack, so it just comes with it. I'm not complaining. I like my job. I, I don't even have pet peeves at this point in my life. Like, nothing, yo, you gotta go really far to bother me. I'm chilling, you know what I mean? Like, whatever, there's, there's things I like better than others, but at the end of the day, I'm not letting anything ruin my day. School should be about exploring all talents. It should be about exploring all crafts and making all, pos all opportunities possible. And when you cut out anything out of the programs, you, you, you minimizing the, the chances of somebody to become successful. One of the first conversations I, I had with him, you know, he, he loved my uniqueness. He loved my originality. You know, he always said I was an icon, down to my, my Staly logo. If you ever seen the Staly logo, you know, he's like, man, you an icon. That logo should be everywhere. And he always used to say, don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. And he recorded it in, like, he was like bobbing his head and then he looks at E and he goes, he's so fucking good. And like, for him to say that, it was like, damn, like he thinks that about me? Like that was just, that blew my mind. And there were a couple different times where he was, took something I did and he said, big pun used to do that. So I could have got next to him because we had Gordo with us, that's his man. You know what I'm saying? So like, yo, you want me to make that? Into I'm like, nah, he trying to party. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it was a, once in a lifetime opportunity, nobody, I don't know because it didn't go down, but I didn't want to disrespect the man's privacy. 